Okay. So Emily, I'm so excited for you to be here today. And I thank you so much for your time. It's something I don't take lightly and I'm really grateful. And I just wanted to share. Um, so today my guest is Emily Waymeyer. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to read directly from your website just because I, I love what it's okay. so, somatic multidimensional therapies and energy medicine to renew, restore, and remember the essential you. And for anyone that isn't familiar with somatic, it just means body wise. And um, this is live, it's unscripted, it's unedited. So bear with us if we have any interruptions or noises or anything like that. Um, and that is the whole nature of this show is just to bring you inspiration, knowledge and resources to help you on your healing path and help you become the best version of you and live the amazing life that you're meant to live. And um, Emily, I know that your work certainly fits into that category. So mm. please share a little bit about your background and how you got into the work that you're doing now. Yeah, I was thinking about that. It's been fun to actually review some of that, right? Because I knew you wanted to talk about that a little bit. And it's it's always interesting. Actually, it's interesting for me with anyone to see what their narrative is, right? And what gets them on a call like this or what gets them working. So to be perfectly honest, it started really, really young. I had a learning disability. And with that anxiety and panic as a really little girl, and so they had me doing all sorts of doctors and the usual tests you would do and all of that. And I have the most vivid memory in, I think it was grade three of going to the school counselor because they would have me do that and doing art with her. And I, it's so interesting to me because I remember this my whole life. And I remember my connection with this woman and I remember making the decision at that time, I'm gonna grow up and help people. And it, re and it remained <laughs> that solid. And I can even feel her to this day, the type of connection she had and how she helped. And it just, it's very interesting to me, right? That kind of imprint that starts so early. So then that, dropped that, let that go completely. My background's I'm from a very normal, we weren't even religious um, background, you know, Toronto, Canada, just everything, normal, normal, normal. But I had insomnia, anxiety, I had autoimmune issues from very young that weren't being diagnosed. I had all huge background of all of that, kind of these mystery illnesses. And, and so, you know, another story came to mind actually in response to you, to you suggesting this, that you wanted to kind of hear some of the personal which is that when I was 15, I somehow knew this, this just isn't, this isn't right. This isn't right that I should be feeling like this. And I actually got myself without my parents knowing it, I somehow got myself to a hospital in Toronto because I thought to myself, surely there are people that help with this, right? That help with this kind of panic and, and physical. Th I mean, I didn't even know what I was shooting for, right? And I ended up, going to the psychiatric ward of a hospital, a large hospital in Toronto. And I, another vivid memory, remember the elevators opening to this, to this psychiatric ward, people in robes. I mean, I have to be honest, it was kind of a stereotypical scene of quite disturbed people wandering in robes and not doing well. And I thought, oh boy, this is definitely not where I belong. And I had an appointment, which actually was quite a profound appointment with a therapist there. And she did the ink blot thing with me. Yeah. And again, I, f and you know, and I found it so fascinating because to this day, that, that actual test reminds me of the type of work I do with people where it's that kind of almost Jungian kind of somatic, how your body responds to something directly. And that was honestly another turning point because although I had no idea which direction I was going or what I needed or I had no reference point, no lineage in my family of healers or <laughs> anything, I knew that wasn't it, right? I knew that definitely was not the direction that my life was gonna go. <laughs> and then many more years passed and um, it was just a, I, I know that this is almost an archetypal story for people but this is really true. It was just a nagging 
nonstop nagging feeling in the back of my life, in the back of my mind, there is something more. There's something more, there's something more, there's something more. And I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find it. So I studied art therapy in, in New York City. And that's when I began to do work with the homeless and I was going into prisons. And so I also had this draw, I had no idea why, to work with socially oppressed groups. And that was from very young, you know, that was in college I was drawn to, and I didn't know why, but I was drawn to groups of people, right? That are oppressed, systemically oppressed, which of course is the work I do now, right? With the family constellation work. So at some point I left New York, I didn't know where I was going. I honestly just, at that point I didn't even have words like guidance or the universe or any of this lingo at all. <laughs> and I actually ended up, I would say by accident, I know it wasn't now, but at a Buddhist retreat center in the woods where I lived for a year in near silence actually. And at this particular, which couldn't have been more the opposite of living an artist's life in the middle of New York City. <laughs> and at this particular re retreat center, every single week and every single weekend, they would have a different type of Buddhist teacher come. And so for an entire year, I can't believe the blessing of this actually, for an entire year, I just got a review of, of every teaching actually from Zen to Buddhist to a certain sect of Tibetan Buddhist to Vipassana to Theravadan, right? All of these different types. And from there, it just grew honestly to what I do now, but I still call on that background, if you will, of kind of a Taoist or Buddhist foundation, actually, when I'm working with people around just being present, right, and coming back to our core and what's essential. So that's that. I mean, I could go on, but that that was kind of I that, that personal part. The essential you, because um, just a couple of things I want to point out from your story is it's so amazing to me that you knew from such a young age. Um, that something was off and that you just stuck with it. Like you believed in yourself and you followed that course. So to have that mm -hmm. come up, even at the age of 15, that, that is a path that most people don't choose. And it's really tragic because a lot of the things that you were experiencing probably are indicative of your uniqueness. And, mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of shame and labels put on things that happen. And, and the people who, move away from those labels and, and into their uniqueness and really embrace their skills and talents, um, no matter how different they are from society, there's not enough people that do that. And, and it's really tragic for right. a lot of people because I, I personally believe that we all come into the world with our unique gifts and talents. And a lot of that is just forced out of that or we're not, we don't ever get in touch with that because nobody supports us. And a lot of people end up being very lost and confused because they're labeled and they're judged and they don't ever have someone that, that helps them see that. So I think that's a really, really amazing thing. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I would just wanted to highlight that because I, I hope that more people will see that um, not only in themselves, but in the people that they parent or are exposed to those so they move away from those labels and recognize that there's something really different and unique um, underneath absolutely yeah so. no, it's really true it's really true and that ends up then being the people that you and i work with right and right and then people who change the world and we need more people like that as opposed right. to a lot of unhappy people that um you know are moving through life not knowing who they are that's a really really unfortunate thing and right. fortunate in that way too. I started having health issues when I was 14, but it wasn't until a good 10 years later that I really started to recognize that I didn't have to be in that place. And I made that commitment to figure out how to get well. And that was a very unique path because I completely moved away from things that I didn't, I didn't know the path to take to get my health back. And I moved away from hmm. choices that most people make. And I had to navigate that all by myself. Hmm. And I always wonder why more people don't come to that same conclusion. Like I had a great life. I really, really wanted to enjoy it. And I was miserably unhealthy and I couldn't. So I mm. figure out how to bring it together and yeah. definitely more options available today, which is actually how I found you. So um, I made a commitment to get my health back in December of 2000. 
and definitely have recovered my health. And since then, I'm just so interested in continuously expanding my health. And I was really focused on physical things when I first get, got started, which mm -hmm. is the most common thing that people are connected to and aware of. And as I continued on my journey, I realized that I was missing the emotional, mental, spiritual pieces. And if I, as I started to bring those things in and start working on those, it not only really changed my life in many significant ways, but also continued my ability to expand my physical health. And so I made the mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. head about, oh, this is all interconnected. It's all one. And since mm -hmm. I've just been fabulously interested in that and like just trying to keep <laughs> looking, what are the next pieces? What haven't I looked at yet? What am I still holding on to with my beliefs? What, you know, anything and everything, because it's been such an interesting and expansive process for me. And that's, right. that's how you and I met and ended up working together mm -hmm. because we were both guests on um, a, the former podcast. It's not um, active anymore, but Warrior Woman with a Purpose, which has since turned into another awesome podcast, which is Mentor in the Mirror. And my friends and mentors, Cole and Tao Witte. And you did a, a podcast interview with Cole there. And um, I had just, I had never listened to podcasts before. And Cole's podcast was so amazing. I got really into it. And there were many, many great practitioners and yeah. products and all kinds of facilitators and facilitators and things like that, that I was exposed to via that. And um, I had never heard of the kind of work that you do. So uh -huh. I was interested in it. And there were a couple other people that she had done um, shows, but that I had reached out to and I wasn't really resonating with them when I connected with them personally, but I definitely did with you. So mm -hmm. wanna, that leads right into what is it that you actually do? <laughs> right. <laughs> I love that question. I always have the initial, my initial response is to feel completely daunted by that. <laughs> because as you know, even having experienced it, it's very hard to describe. It's, yes. It genuinely is hard to describe. So the foundation of what I do is I'm looking at transgenerational patterns. And I'm looking at those, those transgenerational, so multi-generational patterns, then within the larger scope of historical events within the family as well. And then this part's kind of important, this image, right? So, so there's us, obviously, our personal and our energy field, and then outside of that, the family system field, you know, and then the, the historical events that hold that family and shape that family. But then outside of that, because you had kind of asked about this too, this outside of that, there are larger fields actually, right? That are holding and shaping those historical events as well. And so honestly, my work is to work all of those different layers more or less at once with a person to both help. And I, I work with women to mainly help two things really is to help them find where they belong, right? So you were just speaking about that actually. Well, actually you're speaking about both of these to help the belonging piece and then also purpose, right? Because it's, it's both. It's we have to find our belonging and our purpose and they go together and they feed off of each other. So I work with a lot of women who are in leadership roles. And for me, that's a really, I use that word specifically to help people remember mothers are leaders, right? Women in general actually are leaders because we're the connectors in our communities. And so I find that women who don't think they're leaders at all are leading, right? We even lead in our personal relationships. It's usually up to us. So we're leading our children, we're leading at school, we're leading, and then there's ones who define themselves as leaders and entrepreneurs and all that. And the women and the women I work with, the reason I, because I used to work with everyone, the, the reason I actually zeroed it down to women is, is not because like, that's what you're supposed to do as a business or whatever. But the reason I did that is because I want to have the biggest effect. And I, fa I found over 30 years across the board that women, right, once they come back to their essential self and can, and can just lead themselves, be in their core, they spread that naturally and I just love watching that right they spread it to their family their children their every I mean I love watching that and hearing those stories yeah so that's the that's the backdrop and I know I just said a lot so 
<laughs> yeah, so let's dig into that a little bit because it's not, these concepts can be hard to grasp because they're not tangible. We can't see them, taste them, feel them. So we kind of like put them into this like woo realm. And when I'm just, when I'm having, trying, having these discussions with my private clients, oftentimes I encourage them to picture emotions and energy and past traumas and traumas that happened in previous generations as physical things that can literally get stuck in your body the same way a toxin can, an unprocessed food, like yes. insult to your body. And you can hold on to that. And mm -hmm. people can relate to that. And most people can identify, like everybody's had some type of a traumatic or hurtful incident in their lives. And oftentimes, even like 30 years later, if they haven't processed it, they can go back to that and remember, like it'll immediately bring up those feelings. So it's yeah. a good example, I feel, of, of the same thing that you can hold on to a generational trauma. And one example of that, I had one of those that we went through. One of my father's sisters had committed suicide. And it was something that I never talked about when I was growing up. I only knew about mm -hmm. it as an adult. And even when it was mentioned, it was never discussed. So I still don't know what happened to my aunt. Mm -hmm. My father, in my work with you, we uncovered that my father had picked up whatever trauma that my aunt had been carrying. And then I continued to carry it from there, particularly after right. my father had passed. So I was carrying around this physical trauma that wasn't mine and that I had mm -hmm. like no knowledge or understanding of, but it was making an impact mm -hmm. on my health and my uh, belief system and my ability to be the, the essential me and do the work that I want to do in the world. And we mm -hmm. were able to clear that. Um, mm -hmm. It's just amazing. And some other things is, of course, we worked together for like six months. We had many sessions and there were many other things that we cleared. Um, mm -hmm. I was connected to a trauma field of all animals on the planet, which was a yes. massive, massive um, load that I was carrying around that I wasn't aware of that we identified and then cleared. So, mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, I lost my notebook, which I've been keep hoping to stop oh. up somewhere because I have all these fantastic notes and I know I have the recordings of our sessions as well, but I wanted to give some more concrete examples, but that was, those those mm. things that I remembered really, really well, mm. just um, massive, massive shifts for me and huge like weights that came out of my body, um, not just yes. like a feeling energetically, but from a physically perspective that allowed me my health to continue moving forward. Um, so I'd love to hear, you know, share a little bit more. I know our sessions were unique and personal, but the kind of like, how do you identify what's going on with somebody and how do you help them move those things? Yeah. So I'll, wa I'll walk you, I'll walk people through that a little bit because I absolutely, I so get <laughs> how it can seem unfamiliar, strange, intangible. And to me, it's so tangible, you know? So, um, so I wanna give, I wanna answer that with some really concrete examples, literally of what I do. So the very first thing I do with someone is I do a, a four page intake. And the questions on that, and I don't know if you remember it, but the questions on that intake are very specific. And what I'm actually looking for in that, and that starts the work in that intake is, I don't explain this, I just want people to answer the questions, but what I'm actually looking for in all those questions about siblings, children, um, parents, the relationship with the mother and any disruptions in secure attachment, grandparents, any early deaths, any unfair treatment, any exclusions, right? Any exclusions and exclusions means if a child died young or was stillborn and then the family tried to forget it, or there was a gay person in the family and the family tried to shut them out or right. So exclusions or forget forgetting that in the, in that, what I'm actually looking for, because the person knows it, even if they don't know it consciously is I'm looking for who are the missing people, who are the missing people in that family system. And the reason I'm looking for that, so I'll start with that first. The reason I'm looking for that is because what we know, and this is this has actually been tested, proven, medical, both medical, you know, and scientific 
result tests and research have been done for a long time actually about this. What we know is that there are behavioral fields, if you will. So we have our own energy field, but I'll give examples of this, right? So, so many examples of this. Um, flocks of birds, right? So that image of starlings, schools of fish, um, herds, herds of, you know, I think of those herds of wildebeest when there's 10,000 right, at a, at a fast pace. That sense, I'm just gonna list off things that might give an image to people, that sense that we're being stared at and we turn around and someone we don't even know is looking at us or we think of someone and they call, right? Or the fact that the cer certain things that have been studied are, for example, that dogs know when their owners are coming home. Doesn't matter how far away their owner is. Wolves can somehow, we don't know how, communicate 500 miles away, right? In, in literally in terms of their pack and what they're doing. The examples go on and on. And so we've been able to watch this with animals and in nature and then with humans too. So in our culture, what's happened, I call it cultural amnesia, is we have forgotten that we are truly interdependent and that, and we are interdependent within one field that governs our, our family system. It governs social systems so that those social systems are congruent and coherent. And it actually governs those systems across generations. So it's not just one, not just the psychological realm of your family of origin, it goes way further back. And so that's why the example you gave of your father's sister, that's why we can be connected and we see this over and over again with people we didn't even meet and there wasn't psychological material between us, but there's a loyalty. And there are, so we see these, we can experience it for ourselves. There are these loyalties amongst family members that are far beyond just the mother, father, you know, daughter relationship. And so when we look at that, what happens is, is that, in, and in the examples you gave, what's so interesting to me about that, about these so-called, we call them entanglements. What's so interesting about that to me is that it always points to this love and loyalty. You know, people often ask me, how do you not just get depressed with the work that you do, right? You're working with social oppression and collective trauma and inherited family trauma all day long. And the reason I don't is because I'm looking for what is it that's underneath that, right? What is it that creates that bond? And to me, that bond is incredibly beautiful. It's very profound actually. And it's what's keeping us going as a species, honestly. Um, and in family groups, right? It's what it's the glue. That field is the glue. Because if you can imagine, I think people can really relate to this. A lot of us would not necessarily stick together as a family group, right? Mm -hmm. Especially those of us who kind of are black sheep and, and that kind of a thing, yep. right? <laughs> we would have cut them off long ago. And we don't. And the reason we don't is because of that bond. We truly want to belong to our family, but it goes beyond just our thinking, right? It's, right. it's hardwired in our nervous system. And I'm gonna say our field, our energy field. Yeah. So when part of that across generation, when part of what they know about, and it's called the morphogenetic field, what we know about that particular energy field is that it's magnetic, it's electromagnetic, and just like, a, um, I'm gonna describe it like this. The field stretches, but it doesn't break. And that's an important image actually, because we all live very far apart from each other at this point. That bond and that field and those magnetics actually stretch, but they remain in place. And if someone is excluded by other members of the family, the, the field, this is not a conscious thing. It's not like a conscious being thinking, well, that's wrong. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. The structure of the field itself, its job is to remain intact. Its job is to remain whole, 
like anything, right? So if someone's excluded through some form of injustice, the field has memory. And that memory is passed down through actually many generations. This is why the Native Americans speak of seven generations. It, it's real. And so the, the field will seek, I'm using words that are conscious, but it will go into a movement of inclusion, of unification, the unified field. And so when someone's excluded, someone from a later generation will literally represent them. And that is that field at work bringing that person back in. So we can look at it at the basic level of secure attachment and bonding, right? That unconsciously as children, even as adults, we will always bring back in who's missing. But that doesn't quite explain great aunt Sue, right? I mean, that doesn't explain injustices that happen to someone we didn't care about. But the field does explain that. And I just want to say that it's most of, there are many, many um, research projects even currently going about this. And I think that's important. And certainly now epigenetics explains it and what they're finding about epigenetic tags that are on DNA. And we could go into that a bit. But I think honestly, what's even more important is that currently in the, what I've just was describing was the work of family constellations. Right. And, and currently around the world, constellators are collecting anecdotal evidence and patterns of tens of thousands of constellations that have gone on for decades, literally around the world. And I don't just mean kind of in cities and where, I mean everywhere, people are going out to even very far off communities, right? Aboriginals and Native Americans who have been excluded and working in these different groups and in prisons and, you know, hospitals everywhere. And we're finding the exact same patterns, energetic patterns over and over and over again. And so that's part of, what feeds this work is that we're seeing it, right? We're seeing it in tangible ways and that then there are tangible results for people when we do that work and we're able to bring back in to the person, right? We're able to bring that, those excluded people back in. Or in your case, you talked about the collective field of animals. This is also true. It's not just our family members. As human beings, we are exquisitely attuned. I mean, this, this brain and body and field, as you know more than I do, you because you know the whole physical piece of it that's amazing, is we are exquisitely tuned to these fields. And so we're also tracking not just our family, but the collective trauma or the collective successes of larger groups whether it's animals or the ecosystem or the climate or the planet right. or racism or, you know, indigenous people, we're, we're very, we're connected. We just are. Right. I want to break that down a little bit. It all makes sense to me. And um, I know that a lot of people now, when you are thinking about their relationships and their family and deciding whether they wanna be connected to people or not. And it's awesome that we have that choice because when we first came into the world, we wouldn't have had that choice. We would have depended upon others, our tribes for survival. And now we can say, oh, that, you know, this is dysfunctional or this person is hurtful. And even though they're my mother, brother's brother, whatever, um, I choose to disassociate with them as a protective mechanism and mm -hmm. live my life in a different way. And, and that's great that we can do that and make that conscious choice. But if you don't do that energetic separation by like some of the work that you're, that you do, um, you could still be limited by what you've been exposed to and absolutely not you've consciously chosen to disassociate from, but like me, that person that I was connected to that I had never even met in my life. My aunt, she, she was gone before. I, I don't, if I ever met her, I was very young. So I had no mm -hmm. awareness that I was carrying this around. So I just think it's really important to, um, to share that distinction so people can make that choice. And that's one of the reasons why this kind of work is so powerful. You make that conscious choice 
but then you do the energetic clearing and it goes above and beyond and can bring you to new places that way above what right. your business can create. That's a super important point because I, I really, and I want to just comment on that because it's, it's of huge importance what you're talking about is I get people all the time who actually have tried to separate from their family, right? And the word toxic gets used. And, yeah. and what I see is that actually in the way that they've done it, they're actually bonding even more. Because again, the basic law of the family system is that it wants to remain whole. So when people try to kind of just move, right? I'm gonna move across the country or I'm not gonna to talk to them for five years. I get it, believe me, I get it. They think, but what, I, but what we then actually find is that unconsciously they then bond even stronger mm. as a compensation. Same. So the work that, that we did and the work that we're really doing around that is to bring that all to consciousness so that they truly can on every level, including energetically, right? Actually really find where they belong, where it actually is safe and strengthening for them to belong so that then whatever separation they create is congruent and they're not unconsciously bonding even more, right? Through a trauma bond. So right. that's the- Right. Yeah. And then still being stuck, like they have this conscious intention about what they want to create and what they want their life to be like, but there's something is pulling them from behind right. the scenes. And you can, those are the kind of things that you can identify and help people move through. And again, there, a lot of them are unconscious that people aren't aware of them. So for anyone that, right. has that they feel like there's something there, you know, their intention is good. They've done the work to know who they are and what their mindset is and what they want to create in their lives. And they're still feeling stuck. If there's something right. that they can't identify, this is one of the really great things that you can help them with because you have very right. gifts that can help you see all those things that are stuck in their energy field and then how to work with them to clear them. Right, exactly. And so I get that a lot, right? I've done everything. I've done years of work. Why is this still happening, right? And so really I find that that's, um, that's kind of where I come in is great, let's find the stuff that's hidden and embedded. You know, let's, let's get that all out so you can see it and work with it and get into a good relationship with it, yeah. So you said initially that you work with a lot of leaders, like people that, that's, that's kind of people that come to, um, to, that typically find you. And I just wanted to go more into like what kind of scenarios um, that you can help people with just so it's really mm -hmm. clear. And, I said, I'm always interested in expanding people's perceptions or um, knowledge about what's available to them because there's so mm -hmm. many great healing modalities available. And then right. helping guide them to choose what will work for them, you know, because time is, uh, is limited. You don't want to do a whole bunch of things at once. You want to choose things in right. order. Um, and of course, one, well, one of the things that's worked really, really well for me is is what resonates with me. So as I mentioned to you when we first started talking, that when, when I was considering working with you, I was talking to a few different people and mm -hmm. pursuing some different things. I was just interested in personal growth more. And um, I only choose things that resonate with me. So I can't recommend that highly enough for anybody to um, mm -hmm. do something you know, that you just think you should or somebody else did it and it worked for them. Right. not necessarily going to pan out the same way for you. Um, but I would right. like to know more about the types of people that you like working with that, um, the situations that they come in with, they get, they have really good results with, so people have a clearer idea about what, what your work can do and bring, what it can bring for them. Uh-huh. You know what? So it's a, it's a pretty large span, to be honest, because as you know, I have a few different programs and ways of working with people. So I'll just kind of break it down around that, right? So I definitely get people who... Um, I tend to get two categories of people. So, and there's overlap, but I definitely get people who are just at the end of their rope, right? Their health is gone. Um, their relationships, right? Their marriage, their whatever it is. And um, they just have lost peace with themselves, honestly, and are feeling very lost or there's a lot of active trauma. So I absolutely get that, right? And again, it tends to be people where, of course, they've started, as you said, we often look at the physical first. So they've usually already kind of 
been to doctors and maybe they've started to go to some alternative people or, but they've kind of done the things that are more accessible, you know, kind of talk therapy or more, um, a little bit more mainstream. And then at some point, because living with chronic anything, chronic illness, chronic um, emotional stuff, chronic mental stuff, right? It's a, to me, that's actually really sacred because at some point when you're living with chronic illness and which is reminding you constantly of death, right? When you feel ill, death is kind of a thing that just seems like it's right there all the time. Um, it's amazing how that pushes people to actually then examine their life, right? And so um, eventually people usually find me online, actually is where they find me around that. And they've done it all. They've been through everything. They've been to hell and back. And I'm, I'm a fresh voice because I'm looking at it from a very different angle, right? Yes. And I have walked that path so many times, so many times. And so it's quite easy for me to connect with people in that position, give them a hand and kind of walk with them out of there, right? And so that's, that's um, boy, I see physical illness, you know, be released. Or I would say even more um, important and more realistic as I partner with people like you who do the physical piece. And when people come and work with me and do a few sessions, they're able to go back to someone like you and then the nutrition and all these different things actually work better because yeah. they've cleared their underlying um, trauma, but not just trauma, the underlying beliefs that, they're, that are usually unconscious of, I don't deserve this. There's a reason I'm sick. I need to stay sick. All of those things, right. you know, and which are all triggering physical releases of chemicals in your brain that completely control and change the function of your body. So that's an awesome, awesome point. Absolutely right. And so I love, and I and I do it constantly. I love partnering with people who have a different skill set than me. Right. I do my piece. They do theirs, and the client feels better. Right. Yeah, and I don't, I don't together beautifully. It's so cohesive and, yes. and um, complimentary. Yes. So there's, there's that person. Right. And so, and, and what I, what I would say that I also bring to those people and where I see honestly a, a shocking amount of change, even to me, it's surprising. And we haven't talked about this yet, but I'm going to bring it in now is, is the truly energetic piece. So is the piece where people um, feel taken over by something that isn't them. And that comes up a lot. And so, and again, the person is usually very confused. What is happening? I don't even feel like myself or this, these symptoms I get, where are they coming from? Or why do I suddenly go into this rage, right? At my husband or why, you know, um, why do I have this depression that won't leave or the brain fog or that digestive stuff pretty weird you know or dizziness or <laughs> vertigo or tinnitus or right all these types of symptoms that also can have physical causes so often again I'll get the people where they've been to see someone doctors and etc cetera, etc cetera, it's not taking hold right so they end up with me or someone finally recommends me um, and what I find is that they're carrying energies that aren't even them and so again, this can be someone from the family. It can be an ancestor. It can be actually a part of the person. Again, we were kind of just hinting at that, a younger part that doesn't feel like they deserve to be alive or doesn't, they don't deserve to have fun and be healthy, right? Or a part that was abused. So it's not their conscious adult self. It's a part of them that is flooding them and can create symptoms, literally. Or it can be as we did some work with, it can be even unseen beings, right? And those are beings where, and this is ever so common in our culture, where those are beings that didn't pass, didn't have a good death, actually, is it, it's simply put, they didn't have a good death. And so they kind of hang out in this realm and they connect, often it's ancestral, but they connect to my clients actually. And then that causes a lot of symptoms. Um, I don't do, I could, but I don't do a whole lot of past life work because I, I notice that as we work right here, it clears that stuff anyways, but I can do that. And so that's kind of one whole 
realm of people that I help, people with a lot of trauma. And, and I would honestly say that the results are pretty consistent, right? In terms of um, way fewer symptoms, or the, like I said, the ability to go back to the healthcare practitioner and then get results. I love that. Um, an immediate sense of just this oppressive weight that lifts. I, I get that a lot. So people who have chronic fatigue or depression or um, even dizziness, vertigo, that can be actually an instant. That's one that I see kind of, there's an instant relief where, and they report it in the session, like this weight just lifted off of them. Cause they're, car again, they're carrying stuff that's not their load, you know? Um, but I would honestly say what I see the most common is people have a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. So what ha tends to happen is early on when I'm working with them, they start to have a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. And the first time that happens is when they really realize I can actually see who they are, again, their essential self. I see that, I see the person's essential self immediately. And so therefore I discern that from what's not them. And they may not even have been able to name it. They just could feel it and it just doesn't feel right or it causes panic attacks. And as soon as they feel like, wow, I'm seen, it's amazing what can happen just then. And so from that place, once they feel safe, their nervous system then can start to balance. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's where the trauma starts to leave and some of the memories start to leave. And so usually yeah. within that six month span, by the end, the person really, truly is at peace. And I mean, even with their life as it is, because this is not a magic pill, like in six months, we're going to change everything in your life, right? <laughs> right. That's not the intention of it. It's to get back to right. who you are. Exactly. Right. right. To and clear really... what isn't you and a yes. lot of the things that you can't see and that you can't feel, you know. So yes. Right. Yeah. Right. You right. brought up so many good points because everybody is unique. We, and we come into this world and again, we're herded into this system where everybody's got to be the same. And when you don't perform the way somebody else does, or you don't think or talk the way somebody else does, you get judged and you internalize that and it can right. completely shift who you are and um, completely keep you from ever getting to who you are. And that's mm -hmm. a tragedy because the, the uniqueness of all of us is what makes the world such a beautiful, magical place. And, and hey, where there's so many, um, I, I hate to use the word problems, but you know, we're facing a lot of threats, threats to humanity, threats to our environment. And we need right, yeah. uniqueness and creativity. And yes. we, we all need to come back to that. And when we're all contributing from that space, the world is a different place. And because we're, we, we are being ourselves, what that provides for us is just magical. You know, we're at peace, we're in our creativity, we're in our zone of genius, we're contributing right. to the world, but we're also happy. And that's the place that we're supposed to be, that I believe that yeah. we're supposed to be, all visually happy and having an amazing life and deciding what, how we want to contribute and change the world. Um, and right. where we have a general movement that people are moving in that direction, um, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done because a lot of that we've been suppressed. We've been programmed not to be who we are. We've been disconnected from our gifts and we all need to get back to that place. And it's the whole reason why I do what I do with these interviews and inviting people and mm. resources because there's so much more available to us mm. Mm. than people realize. And, and I'm right. like, just to open people up. Like you, you're an amazing person. Um, your capabilities have been restricted, what you're capable of, what your desires are, they're all worthy. And if you do the work and take the action with all of these things that are available to you, then the place that you can get to is just beyond what, where most people live or conceive of. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I, I'm literally in awe. Every, <laughs> every day I'm in awe because I get to, you just described that so beautifully, right? And that's, that's kind of the other segment of people that I work with, right? Are yes, we're clearing stuff, but really I'm, they've done a lot of it already. And they're wanting to get to what you just said, where it's like, okay, I've done that foundational work. 
but I'm still not totally clear on what my purpose is and how to pull it off, right? Or with a lot of women, they're trying to move into those leadership roles. And again, leadership, I use that word very broadly, but it's important. Um, but unfortunately they're doing it from a masculine place, which yes. can really, really mess with a woman. And so I'm helping them to understand how to move into a leadership role and hone that from the feminine, which is a force. <laughs> that is a force to learn to harness. And, um, but you just described it beautifully, how that happens actually and where a person can get to. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm in awe, right? Beyond what I can usually put into words, what I see, where I see people come to. It's incredible, right? And, and it doesn't matter. This is really the truth of it. It is truly irrelevant how much trauma they've had. I see women get to that same place of absolute uh, potential and potency regardless, right, of how bad the trauma was. And again, it's about that essential self. That essential self isn't touched by that trauma, right? So if you work in a way where you really can can land there and then practice staying there because that's the real work is not just landing there it's done but returning returning right right, right? Just, yeah can be really yes hard. truly truly I have seen people the most horrific trauma right are the stories I hear I mean the most and um and it doesn't matter and that's I think just being around Honestly, I think it's just this, conversations like this, right? That's why I really get what you're doing and having these conversations because if people can even kind of connect in with our hope and the awareness we have that, wow, it doesn't matter where you started, you can still end up here, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> and everyone has that potential. Yeah, I also want to point out that we oftentimes judge our traumas or compare them. So, oh, well, I didn't have the trauma that she had. I wasn't vilely raped. I wasn't from an abusive family, but we all have traumas. And sometimes it's just an interpretation of the way that we're spoken to that creates a belief that we're operating out of that is really a trauma to our body. So I just wanted to throw that out there to encourage anybody, like don't judge your traumas. If something was traumatic right. for you, then that that's still living in your body if you haven't worked to clear through that. And it, right. can, it can affect the rest of your life. And I really right. want to thank you for what you've done and how you've pushed through what could have become a very, very different scenario. Like you made these choices and I'm sure that your path was not easy and not to, and then this isn't coming from a place of judgment or criticism, but you could very easily have gotten medicated and further suppressed your gifts and, you know, gotten out of your head because it was a hard place to be. And it wasn't mm -hmm. that society was encouraging you to be in. And again, mm -hmm. judgment around anybody that chooses medications or that pathway, because I, that's the common choice. And most people don't know they have a different choice and mm -hmm it can be very, very painful to be in that situation. And without support, mm -hmm. probably going mm -hmm. into that, choosing that space, I totally, totally get that. But mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. push through that and come to a different place, um, you know, and then offering your gifts and helping people in that way, um, you know, I'm just really, really grateful that you were able to do that. Um, mm. Me so too. People <laughs> are able to do that as well because it's definitely um, we're definitely moving in that direction. There's more and more absolutely choices. I certainly yeah. see that. It's I'm glad you're saying that because I actually really see that. It's amazing. I mean, again, having done this for three decades, I I have a span of time I'm looking at right and. What people were doing even 10 years ago, 15 years ago, is very different from even now in the last five years. It's really true that there's been this, um, it's just come together. There's something happening. There's absolutely something important happening in the midst yeah. of all of this world trauma. There's something else happening that's the opposite of that. Yeah. And waking up, people are waking up and it's incredibly beautiful to see actually. I agree. And particularly with women, because women have been suppressed and nothing against men because, you know, I adore men and I um, am sad when I hear people putting down men as if they're the problem and the creation, you know, that we all did this together, but women are coming out of that space where they're not playing by the boys rules anymore and stepping into their mm -hmm. family and ruling mm -hmm. that place. 
Um, and that's uh, just, in, it's such a beautiful thing to witness because, you know, mm. have offered their gifts for a really long time and um, women are really stepping into their power. And at the same token, mm. also been suppressed within the patriarchy, within the boys rule society, and they're not playing at, to the degree that they can either. So I think all mm -hmm. of it is opening up for everybody that chooses to play in that space and mm -hmm. figure out um, mm -hmm. who they are and where they want to go with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> is there anything else that you want to say before we wrap up? Oh, wow. I'm just really happy to be here. It's great to have this conversation with you. And um, like I said, I watched some of your other ones and it's, it's just, there's something so important about these conversations, right? Because right. honestly, this is a constellation right now, right? And when you get two or more people in a space and they're, and they're holding that um, field of potential was really what it is, right? It, it expands and it's, it's really good to do so. <laughs> Agreed. So thank and you. I thank you so yeah. much for your time and the work that you do and for being here with us today. Mm, thank you. Great. <laughs>